What's up guys? Welcome to Fantasy Smack Talk. I'm Namco sitting here with Dustin. Week 3 is upon us and in this show there's you're probably some panicked owners out there so we're going to touch base to do on what to do with underperforming guys and of course we're going to get into the forums. But first, who's our winner this week in the Pick'em? Shout out to Bob out in Seattle. Seattle killing us. Yeah, two weeks in a row someone out in Seattle. In case you're wondering who was second, it was this guy. Lost in a tie break, but congratulations Bob. Your shirt will be in the mail shortly. All right, Dustin, now here's a couple guys that are really underperforming. We've got a lot of questions about them in the forums, a lot of panicked owners. So what to do with Jamal Charles, Jonathan Stewart, Beanie Wells, Sean Green, and Ryan Matthews? All right, I'm about to blow you away with the best fantasy advice you'll ever get. Deal with it. <laughs> you got to just sit this, you got to see this through. There's a reason you drafted him so high. If you trade him now, you're, gonna, you're not going to get enough value for him. And the worst thing you can do is trade them cheap and then they turn it around and then you hate yourself for doing it. You just got to ride this out and hope they turn it around. If you want to do a trade, trade one of your other guys who's, who's performing. It's very much like the stock market. Buy low, sell high. Don't trade these guys. And that's a great point. Buy low on almost all of these guys. And I really like Jamal Charles as a buy low Green. John Green's not a bad one either. Buy low on both of those guys. Even all these. If you can get them really cheap, now's the time to do it. All right, now on the other end of that, guys like Arian Foster and oh, Javid okay. Best, these guys are playing out of their minds right now. Do you hold on to them thinking they keep it up, or do you try to sell these guys well, high? Of course you hold on to Arian Foster. He's going <laughs> to be a, a stud all year. But uh, I love that guy. Probably my firstborn is going to be named Arian at this point. With that being said, if you can get a top you know, first or second round value out of these two, like let's say you know, Randy Moss is kind of underperforming and Miles Austin, Definitely do Roddy that trade. White. Roddy White, you have to do that right now. You're just trading them so high, it's a perfect time to do it. Yeah, do not be afraid to trade these guys high. Yeah, they might keep it up, but if Arian you can get Will. a guy that you know is pretty much going to if he can stay healthy, why not pull the trigger? Arian Will. All right, Dustin, let's get into those forum questions. The first one comes from TFT. He wants to know who should he start this week? D'Angelo against Cincy, LT versus Miami, or Brandon Jackson against the Bears on Monday night? Well, I think you got to throw LT against Miami out right away. So for me, it's just between D'Angelo and uh, Brandon Jackson. And this is tough. I know the report came out of the Green Bay that Jackson's not going to get a full workload. But who does these days? He's going to get the majority of carries on a great offense going up against the Bears. But again, but with D'Angelo, I don't see how you can put him on your bench. He's always just one play away from making your fantasy week. Jackson's just a little too scary. Stick with D'Angelo. And the fantasy smack talk community agrees with 46% saying D'Angelo on the homepage. It's tough, though. All right, Brent, we got one from Brett Berry, 23. McNabb at St. Louis or Brett Favre versus Detroit? Well, I just don't trust Brett Favre anymore. I hate his receiving core. I mean, sure, he has Shianko that he throws the ball to, it seems like, every time. But... It, Without Sidney Rice, it's really been a bad year for the Vikings. McNabb's coming off of a huge day against the Texans. They don't really have a run game in Washington, it looks like. I think McNabb's going to throw the ball a lot, and against that terrible Rams secondary, he's going to score up a lot of points for you. The homepage, there's a poll on this one as well. 77% say McNabb, but I'm saying Favre. I'm going out on a limb. He's not going to go 0-3. He the Lions are not going to do it to him. He does care. He's gonna, he doesn't I, care anymore. It, it's a tough start. I might eat my words, but I think Favre has a monster game. All right, Dustin. The Matrix wants to know, should he start Steve Smith, the Giants version, versus the Tennessee Titans in a pretty good secondary, or Mark Clayton versus the Washington Redskins that gave up 8 billion yards to Matt Schaub last week? <laughs> I mean, here's the deal with Clayton. Yeah, he's had two good games in a row. Last week, I liked him. he had only two catches. They just happened to be <laughs> touchdowns. A very important place to the ball. That is important, obviously. But the Redskins D is pretty solid. I think they're going to put a lot of pressure on Bradford. I don't think the Rams have hardly any success against Washington's defense. I think you got to stick with Steve Smith on this one. Yeah, that's our Steve Smith tail. <laughs> All right, let's get into our studs, duds, and sleepers. We'll start with my picks, and my stud is Mr. Joe Flacco. He's been terrible so far this year, but he's going to have his breakout party against Cleveland. He's going to have a big game. My dud is Darren McFadden against Arizona. Cool. Now, I'm not saying he's a must bench. I'm just saying I'd start a lot of other running backs over him this week. We don't know how Michael Bush is going to factor in. I just don't think McFadden has another monster game. And my sleeper is Fred Jackson against New England. Now, I don't really have a lot to back this up with. I just think they, they gave Spiller the most carries week one, Lynch the most carries week two. I think Jackson's going to get more involved week three. 
you know, definitely not a must start, but in certain situations, you might want to throw them in. Go with your gut, I like it. I, on the other hand, I'm gonna put a lot of numbers in front of you. I did a little research this week. My stud, Tony Romo against the Texans. No one's thrown the ball more than Tony Romo in the first two games, and the Texans have given up over 400 yard passing back-to-back -back weeks to Manny and McNabb. I think it's Romo's turn. My dud is Cadillac versus Pittsburgh, and I'm saying a big time dud. I'm saying bench him at pretty much all costs. The Pittsburgh Steelers have only given up 52 yards rushing on average per game, and they've already faced Chris Johnson as part of that. Cadillac is definitely no Chris Johnson. And my sleeper, John Carlson against the San Diego Chargers. The Chargers are historically bad at defending the tight end, and this year already they've given up three touchdowns to tight ends. I figure it's Carlson's turn this week. All right, let's get into Mike's picks, and we start with Drew Brees against Atlanta. The guy's good. He's going to have another good game. His dud is Eli Manning against Tennessee, who's only allowing about 85 yards a game passing. Eli could definitely have a tough time this week. And his sleeper really going out on a limb here. So, Jeremy, Killing him again. Jeremy again. Macklin, he's had a touchdown each of his first two weeks. Now, he doesn't have a lot of yards and a lot of catches, so maybe that's why he's his sleeper this week. But going up against Jacksonville secondary, looks like Vic's more committed to the pass, so Macklin should have another good game. But that's it for this week. I'll get into those forms so that we might answer them on the show next week. We're in there as much as we can, answering as many questions. Get into our games. I'm Dustin. This is Brent. We'll see you next time.